Preceding the destruction of the Beis Amikdash, Rav Yochanan ben Zakkai confronts Vespasian. And he accurately predicts Vespasian's ascension to the emperorship of Rome. In response to this prediction, Vespasian grants Rav Yochanan ben Zakkai three requests. The first of these requests is Rav Yochanan ben Zakkai explains to Vespasian he wants him to spare the city of Yavne v'chachameha. Tainly Yavne v'chachameha, recognizing that even with the demise of the Mikdash, if the Jewish people had within its core a city that was devoted to the perpetuation of Torah values and Torah study, that ultimately the soul of the Jewish people would endure beyond whatever destruction was impending. The second request that Rav Yochanan ben Zakkai makes is for the lineage of Rabban Gamliel, because Rabban Gamliel personifies the notion of Jewish leadership. And in order for Am Yisrael to be able to persist beyond the challenges that they find themselves within currently, they must have leaders that could transcend the current circumstances with the vision and the recognition for potential and the ability to raise people up beyond the constraints of their current circumstance. The third request that Rav Yochanan ben Zakkai makes is for a physician to heal Rav Tzadok. Rav Tzadok, whose body had become emaciated through the many fasts that he had undertaken on himself in order to pray for the sparing of the Jewish people and the sparing of the Mikdash was himself in dire straits in terms of his health. And Rav Yochanan ben Zakkai recognized that the death of Rav Tzadok would be a tremendous blow to the morale of the Jewish people. To watch someone who literally immersed their life in care and concern, in love for the world of Am Yisrael, to suffer to such an extent and ultimately pass away would be a immeasurable blow to the Jewish people. And it was perhaps this type of vision of the recognition that Rav Yochanan ben Zakkai had of what elements and dimensions of the Jewish people were core and necessary in order for them to live beyond the impending destruction that is responsible for the immortality of the Jewish people in ensuring that we've in fact did live to develop and grow beyond the tragedy of Chorban Habayis. And even though it was so recognizable to Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai himself that leadership was such a central dimension to the future of Am Yisrael, it took the Romans some time to come to the similar conclusion. The Romans, in the aftermath of the destruction of the Beis Hamikdash, essentially entered into a period of somewhat restraint in terms of their oppression on the Jewish people. And it wasn't until the aftermath of the Bar Kokhba revolt when they recognized that allowing charismatic personalities and people who had the capacity to lead the nation to, go, to grow beyond where they found themselves, that recognition that such personalities present in the community of the Jewish people posed a threat to the long-term domination of the Roman Empire in the Middle East. And as a result, in the aftermath of the Bar Kokhba revolt, we find that then the Emperor Hadrian, begins to enact a number of decrees that are intended to curtail the influence and the impact of Torah leaders upon the Jewish people. Banning all sorts of Torah study, all sorts of opportunities for leaders of Am Yisrael to inspire, to teach, to develop, to evolve the community, and to ensure that they have the strength and the fortitude to transcend their world of Churban that they had encountered through the ultimate fall of the Bar Kokhba world. And this entire experience, this entire oppression of the Roman people on the leadership of Am Yisrael reached its pinnacle with the Asara Haruge Malchus. The Asara Haruge Malchus, the ten martyrs, ten individuals who personified the values and ideals of what it means to be a Jew, ten individuals whose self-sacrifice and devotion and dedication to Torah study, to Torah teaching, to the development of our Mesorah, was something that dominated every fiber of their being. Ten individuals who stood at the forefront of the Jewish people's communal infrastructure, essential in developing all of the different components necessary in order for Am Yisrael to be able to perpetuate its legacy as a nation devoted to the ideals and values of Torah. And so the emperor of Rome and his servants end up finding themselves within the world 
of Eretz Yisrael, and one by one, horrifically executing each and every one of these leaders. One of the keynotes that we read on Tisha B'av depicts these executions in a most graphic and yet poetic manner. And we encounter as one of the ten martyrs, Rav Hanina ben Tradio. The Asara Haruge Malchus are focused upon at two different points in the Jewish calendar. The first is on Yom Kippur, when we relate to the notion of Misas Tzadikim Mechaprim, that even though it is so tragic to lose an eminent leader of the Jewish people, that such a loss, that such a void does produce some degree, some measure of kapara, of atonement for the Jewish people. But the other day of the year is today, is on Tisha B'av. When we sit on the floor and we read the kina of Asara Haruge Malchus, the kina of Arze Halevano, Nadire Atora, and we remember that part and parcel of this churban, of this destruction, is not just the loss of the temple, and not just the loss of the sacrifices, of the karbonos, of the service in the Mikdash, of the kohanim, but of the leaders that ensure that the Jewish people can live their lives consistent with their values and ideals and be able to grow their families, grow their communities, and progress the mission of the Jewish people. The kina depicts the execution of Rav Hanina ben Tradio. And this kina is based on the Gemara of Odezara, on Daf Yud Ches Amad Aleph. Mutsa'uhu l'Rabbi Hanina ben Tradio. They found, they discovered Rav Hanina ben Tradio. Shahaya Yoshe Osik b'Torah, that he was sitting and he was involved in the study of Torah. Umakil kihilo spirabim, and he would gather people together publicly to teach them Torah. V'sefer Torah munach lo becheiko, and there was a Sefer Torah sitting with him right there on his chest. Hevi uhu, they brought him out, v'karchuhu b'sefer Torah, and they surrounded him in this Sefer Torah, v'ikifuhu b'chavile zimuros, and they literally inserted in between the Sefer Torah and his body items that would help ignite the Sefer Torah, and they ignited this entire entity. And they placed doused parts of wool by his heart. They soaked them in water. They placed them on his heart. So that his soul would not depart quickly. Omrolo Bito, and horrifically, his daughter was sitting right there and she says to him, Abba Erech Bekach, Father, how can I see you in such a state? Omar Law, and he says to her, Il Nisrafti Levadi, if I have just been burned at the stake on my own, Haya Hadavar Koshali, it would be so difficult for me. Akshal Shani Nisraf for Torah Imi, now that I am burning together with the Sefer Torah, I know that HaKadosh Baruch Hu watching this entire picture, that His wrath will pour out on those who destroy His Sefer Torah, and by extension, He will take revenge on those who execute me as well. Amru Lo Talmidov, his students are sitting there, this happens in the middle of his shir, and his students are sitting there and they ask him, Rebbe, Ma'ataro'e, what do you see? And Tosas asks, what kind of question is this? The Gemara is saying, what do you see? What is the vision? What is your insight? What is your re'iya? What is your perspective on what's happening now? How can we understand this from a spiritual perspective, from a theological perspective? What is going on? A Rebbe who teaches us Torah, who sacrifices everything for the perpetuation of the Jewish people is being burned alive with the Sefer Torah. Ma'a Torah. What do you see? So Amr La'en, he says to them, Gvilin Nisrafin, I'll tell you what I see. I see parchment is burning. The osios, but the letters of that parchment, parchos pa'avir, are floating up, are ascending into the air, into the sky. And the question is, what is the message of Rav Hanina ben Tradion in these final moments? What does it mean that Gvilin Nisrafin, the osios parchos pa'avir. So the truth is that a Sefer Torah is comprised of two elements. One is the gvil, is the parchment, the context, that which the letters find themselves attached to, the encasing for the Dvar Hashem. And the other component, the other dimension are the osios, are the letters themselves inscribed and infused with Kedusha by the Sofer who composes the Sefer Torah. 
The gvilin is nisrafin, says Rav Chanin ben Shradion. The parchment is burning, but the osios, that which represents the substance of Torah, that which represents the impact and influence of Torah, that which represents the legacy of Torah, parchos pa'avir, that is not being consumed in the fire. That is rather rising to heaven, accomplishing and achieving its ultimate goal. The Sefer Torah has these two components, and so metaphorically does every Jewish community and every phase of Jewish history. There is a dimension of Jewish life that is the gvil, that is the parchment, that is the context, the organizations, the institutions, our communities, that which creates the framework upon which we can function and thrive as Ovdei Hashem. And then there are the osios, there's the substance of that experience. There is the vitality of that experience. There's the impact of that experience. There's what it means to live as a Jew. The destruction of Tisha B'av, that which we remember, that which we internalize. Today, as we sit on the floor and we commemorate not just the destruction of the Beis Amikdash, but the destruction of every Jewish community throughout Jewish history. The message of Rav Hanino ben Tradion to those sitting on the floor watching this destruction, to his students and to us, is that yes, you're watching the Mikdash burn. Yes, you're watching the parchment of the Sefer Torah burn. Yes, you have watched the destruction of countless Jewish communities throughout Jewish history. But osios parchos pa'avir. But the impact the influence, the achievements, that which we brought to the world of fruition, that is immortal, that will endure, that will perpetuate. No one could ever take that away from us. And that is ultimately one of the most central messages of the world of Tisha B'Av. The notion that while Jewish history is full of destruction and Jewish history is full of tears and the story of Am Yisrael is certainly one that could be told on a timeline of tragedy, there are also from within the ashes of so much of that tragedy, so many moments of glory, so many moments of accomplishment and achievement, of focus on the goal, of osios that are pochos pa'avir. The gvil is so holy. The gvil has to be constructed lishma, with intent, with spiritual intent. The gvil has to be from a kosher animal, that parchment is real. Those communal frameworks are real, they're central, they're key, they're important, but they're supportive to the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is the investment that every personal Jew makes, personified by a letter in the Sefer Torah, in ultimately embracing our mission as a nation, our mission as an Am. And that is something that no destruction, and no holocaust, and no crusade, and no churban has ever managed to truncate in terms of the ultimate march of the Jewish people towards its destiny. I want to share with you a quick story. There is an amazing hero named Yosef Mendelovich. Yosef Mendelovich, as many of us know, spent some significant time serving in a Russian prison. And while he was serving in that prison, he gave himself essentially a Jewish education. And he writes in his autobiography that was released in the last couple of years, that while he was in the prison, one day, Someone snuck in through the, visitors, uh, through the visitor station a Renat Yisroel sitter, a sitter from Eretz Yisroel. And when he got his hands on this sitter, he was so excited because for him, the opportunity to learn the sitter, to use the sitter, to be able to connect to the Rabbon Shalom through tefillah, it was unparalleled in terms of his experience. And one of the things he realized was that that sitter was so precious. That sitter was so vital to him being able to hold that connection to Israel and to God, to tefillah, to the Jewish people. And he feared that one day it could be confiscated, taken away, destroyed. And so he began a process to clandestinely copy the sitter. He volunteered to serve in his workforce late at night so that he could spend his time during the day when no one was around and copy each page of the sitter. And as he would copy each page, he would hide a different page in a different section of the barrack so that no one would be able to discover his sitter. And he writes that something phenomenal occurred as he was copying over the sitter for the fourth time. 
He's sitting there at the desk, copying letter by letter, looking at the sitter, looking at his page, looking at the sitter, looking at his page, very much reminiscent of the way a sofa writes a Sefer Torah. And as he is copying it over, all of a sudden he recognizes that he is able to fill the words on the blank page without looking at the original book, without looking at the original sitter. And he began to recognize that by copying over the sitter so many times, he had learned the tefillah by heart. And he writes that at the moment that he realized that he knew it by heart, at the moment that he recognized that he was not tethered to the gvil, that the osios were pokos pa'avir, that they were part of who he was, that was the moment he realized that it didn't matter if they came and confiscated his sitter. It didn't matter if they came and destroyed that Renat Yisrael sitter. Because the tefillah of the Jewish people would live immortally within him. They could never extract it from his soul, from his mind. And even if he was locked up in solitary confinement, he could close his eyes and focus on those letters and arrange the osios that are porchos ba'avir into the formulation of the tefillos of Am Yisrael to HaKadosh Baruch And he writes that that was such a resurging feeling of freedom that he was no longer shackled, not just to the words on the page, but to ultimately the desires of those Russian guards in terms of what he would be able to do and what he would not be able to do. This is one of our greatest challenges and our greatest goals, to not become so obsessed with the world of the gvil, with the world of the context of what my school looks like relative to your school looks like, of what my shul looks like relative to what your shul looks like, what my institution's flag is relative to your institution's flag. These are all the gvil of the Jewish people. It's important. It's holy. It's, it's, it has sanctity. And in fact, each os of the Sefer Torah is only kosher if it's entirely surrounded by gvil. They can't touch each other. The gvil is central and essential to the vitality of the Torah. But at the end of the day, this is not what lasts. This is not the soul of who Am Yisrael is. The soul of who Am Yisrael is, that which can never be destroyed, not on a Tisha B'Av, not on a Shabbos or B'Tamuz, not on a Yom HaShoah, not on a Ava Rachmim, in no capacity, way, shape, or form, are the accomplishments and achievements of Am Yisrael is our dedication and devotion to Torah, to mitzvos, to tefillah, and most of all, to each other. That is the dimension of Am Yisrael that lives on Olam Voed. Says the Talmidim of Rav Hanina ben Shradion, Ma'ata Ro'e, what do you see? Answers Rav Hanina ben Shradion, I'll tell you what I see. I see the gvil in Nisrafin, I see that there will be many moments in Jewish history where the parchment burns. But I also see the osios parchos ba'avir. I see the sitter that has become part of the fabric of Yosef Mendelovich. I see the Torah that has become part of the soul of our Jewish community. I see the tefillah that has become part of the core of what it means for us to be in Ikbeis HaKnesses. I see how individuals and their goals and ambitions and accomplishments and achievements so transcend anything that holds them in place, any of their contexts, any of their institutions. That is the osios parchos ba'avir. That is us, that is our families, and that is everything we devote every waking moment to, to advance the mission of Am Yisrael, the mission of Torah, the mission of chesed, and the mission of bringing to the world the values and ideals of the Rebbe Shalom.